When we did quadratics, we talked about the big four of quadratics. It was the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts. And that's what we needed to graph. Well, to graph a polynomial, we need a little bit more than that. And we're going to start with these big four. Anytime you have a polynomial, you can list these four things. First, you can list what the degree of that polynomial. The degree is the highest power of the variable. So those positive whole number exponents that were on the variables, the highest one of those, that is what we call the degree of the polynomial. Next we have the leading term. That is the whole term that contains that highest power that we just found. Then we have the leading coefficient which is the coefficient of the leading term. Remember, coefficient is the number in front. So we want the number in front of that whole leading term. And the last one is the constant, which is the term that has no variable in it. So we're going to come right here to A, and we're going to list these four things. We need degree, leading term, leading coefficient, and constant. So the degree is the highest power on the variable. So if I look right here, that's going to be that 5. That's the highest power on a variable I've got, degree 5. Leading term is the whole term that contains that degree. So the whole 4x to the 5th that has the degree. Next is my leading coefficient, which is the coefficient in front of your leading term. So 4. And finally, the constant is the term without a variable. So five, negative 5 is the one that doesn't have a variable on it. That's our constant. Now, we'll talk about more why we need these later. But if you remember when we graphed quadratics, this constant we had at the end actually turned to be our y-intercept. And the same thing will be true when we're graphing these polynomials. This constant term is your y-intercept. And that is why we find it. That's why we talk about it. We'll talk, we, we'll, these are used for graphing as well, and we'll talk about how later on in this lesson. So what I would like you to do is look at B and C, and I want you to find the degree, leading term, leading coefficient, and constant for both B and C. Now, C might catch you a little bit, so I would take C and rewrite the equation like this. So you're dividing both of those things by 5 and writing it out like that. It's a little easier to see when you write it that way instead. So pause the video. Take a second to find the big four for B and C, and then come back to check and see how you did. Let's see how you did. So for B, our biggest exponent is a 3x cubed. The leading term is the x cubed. Now notice the leading term doesn't always come in the front. The leading term is the one that contains the highest exponent. Leading coefficient is the secret 1 in front of that x cubed. And the constant, remember, is the term that doesn't have a variable. Notice that in this problem, everything has a variable, which means your constant is the secret plus 0 that we can add on to the end. So your constant is 0. Now, be careful about this. Constant of 0 is different than no constant. Because a constant of 0 means I'm going to have a y-intercept at 0, meaning at the origin. So there's my y-intercept. However, if I have no constant, that means I don't have a y-intercept, which would mean an asymptote at 0. No y-intercepts. So, don't put none here, because there is a constant, there is a y-intercept, it is at 0. Now we can look at C. Our highest power is a 1, 
there's my whole leading term and the leading coefficient in front of that leading term, and my constant, the one that doesn't have a variable on it. So hopefully you're starting to get pretty good at those four things. So let's look at D. Notice on D, D looks very, very different from any of the examples we've done so far. That's because D is written in a different form. Now, when we did quadratics, we talked about standard form and vertex form. All three of A, B, and C are written in standard form. However, D is a new form. This is written in factored form because everything's been factored out. Factored form is really nice for finding x-intercepts. That is what it's really, really nice for. Because in factored form, you just set each of your factors equal to zero, and then solve, and that's your x-intercepts. However, because this is written in a different form, we're going to find these four things very differently. Now I'm going to say that again because it's so important. Because it's in a different form, we're going to find these four things very differently. And let me show you why. A lot of students would look at D and say, oh, the degree has to be 3 because that's my biggest exponent. But the degree is the biggest exponent when it's all been multiplied out. So what I mean by that, if I took 2x minus 1 cubed, so 3 times, x minus 2 and 3x plus 2, and I foiled everything out to get this big, long, ugly, gross answer, the highest exponent in that answer would be the degree, because it's the highest exponent you can get, the highest exponent overall. So factored form is a little bit harder to find the degree than standard form. But we can still do it. So let's talk about how we still find the degree in factored form. To do that, I want to look back at A. Notice that here in A, we didn't even use the stuff in the middle. All I used was the biggest term and the smallest. And then same thing here for B. I didn't use this one in the middle. I used my biggest term and my smallest term. So we don't really care, like when you foil this out, we don't care what's in the middle. All we care is about the biggest, because that's how we find our leading term degree and leading coefficient, and the smallest, because that's how we find our constant. So what we need to do, we don't need to foil this whole thing out. We don't need to distribute all of this. We have a shortcut. We just need to find the biggest term and the smallest term. So to do that, we're going to write our factored form out twice. And we're going to use this one to find our biggest term. And we're going to use this one to find our smallest term. Now, to find the biggest term, I only want to multiply together the biggest things. I don't need to FOIL the whole thing out. I don't need to distribute everything. I just need to distribute and multiply the biggest things. So I'm going to go in each set of parentheses and ignore the smaller things. So I'm going to ignore that minus 1. I'm going to ignore that minus 2. And I'm going to ignore that plus 2. So I'm just keeping the things that have the highest variable in them. So let's look at what I have left. I have 2x cubed times x times 3x. If I simplify this, i got to cube both of those. So 2 cubed is 8x cubed times x times 3x, which is 24 x to the, these ones have secret ones, and when you're multiplying variables, you add the exponents, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 24x to the 5th. 
And that right there is actually your leading term. That is the biggest you're going to get when you multiply all of this together because I just took the biggest ones and multiplied them together. So now we can say, if that's my leading term, the degree is 5, the exponent, and my leading coefficient is going to be 24. So that is how you find the biggest one when it's in factored form. Remember, it has to be in factored form to do it this way. If it's in standard form, you just find the biggest one, you're good to go. So the first thing you should do when you look at these problems is identify what form it's in. In factored form, do this way. Standard form, just find the biggest one. So now let's talk about the smallest. To find the biggest one, I got rid of all the small things. So to find the smallest one, I'm going to get rid of all the big things. So that gives me negative 1 cubed times negative 2 times positive 2. Negative 1 cubed is still a negative 1 times a negative 2 times a positive 2 is a positive 4. And that is your constant term. That is the smallest it's going to get, the one that doesn't have any variables in it. So that is how you find your big 4, whether you are in standard form or factored form. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about how to use these things to start graphing polynomials.